Hello everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate the transverse section of the axilla. Now identifying structures in a transverse section can be a bit challenging compared to an anterior view as the muscles appear intermingled in cross section. So to make sense of this image, let's begin by locating the nerves, vessels, and the surrounding pad of axillary fat. These indicate the main contents of the axilla. But before we look at the contents, it's important to first orient the specimen to understand which sides represent the anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral aspects. If you observe carefully, you'll notice a lateral convexity formed by the chest wall, which includes the upper four ribs and their intercostal muscles. This side, therefore, marks the medial wall of the axilla. Along this region, we can also appreciate the serratus anterior muscle, which takes its origin from the ribs. Moving to the lateral aspect, the lateral wall appears narrow and is formed by the surgical neck of the humerus. The anterior surface of the humerus is identified by the bicipital groove, which contains the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii. Just medial to the shaft of the humerus, you can see the cut sections of the coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps brachii lying close together. The anterior wall of the axilla is mainly formed by two muscles, the pectoralis major, which forms the bulk of the anterior wall, and the pectoralis minor, which is smaller and lies deep to the pectoralis major. Now look at the posterior wall. It appears thicker and more muscular than the anterior wall. Within this wall, you can see a thin plate of bone, the scapula, appearing as a white line in cross section, surrounded by muscle fibers. The posterior wall is primarily formed by two major muscles, the subscapularis, which lies on the costal, anterior surface of the scapula, and the infraspinatus, which occupies the infraspinous fossa on the dorsal surface of the scapula. The dorsal surface of the scapula also provides attachment to the supraspinatus from the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinatus from the infraspinous fossa. Since this section is taken below the level of the head of the humerus, that is, below the spine of the scapula, the muscle seen on the dorsal side here is infraspinatus. Another muscle seen along the posterior wall is the teres minor, which lies close to the infraspinatus. Just behind the shaft of the humerus, you can identify the tendon of the long head of the triceps. On the lateral side of the humerus, you can see the deltoid muscle forming the outer contour. Now coming back to the contents of the axilla, we can clearly identify the axillary vessels. Here, the axillary artery lies on the lateral side, while the axillary vein is seen medial to it. Remember this relationship. Throughout the axilla, the axillary vein always lies medial to the axillary artery. Surrounding the artery, you can notice several whitish structures, which are the cords and branches of the brachial plexus. Although it's difficult to distinctly label each cord in this section, we can approximate their positions. The lateral cord lies lateral to the artery, the medial cord lies medial to it, and the posterior cord, or possibly its largest branch, the radial nerve, is located posterior to the artery. And that brings us to the end of the demonstration of the transverse section of the axilla. Thank you for watching.